Welcome to Helmet Camera 201. I'm Tiger. I'm going to be your host for this. Um, the reason I'm doing this is for paintball players, but everybody can probably learn something from this. I don't have a degree in this. I don't have anything other than practical experience for many, many years. So take this as the friendly advice it is being given as. All right. And uh, we're talking specifically about music in Helmet Camera videos. So uh, what this is not, let me get that out of the way. Uh, we're not talking about what kind of helmet camera to buy, so that, don't even look for that. We're not going to talk how to shoot your helmet camera footage, although I may do that at a later time. Uh, and this is also not going to be talking about how we're going to work around copyright law, because we're doing this one by the book. Okay. Now, the whole thing that caused this video to happen was somebody put up a, video, uh, a question on one of the forums that I frequent saying, is music important? And I just wanted to jump through the monitor and scream, yes, it's important! It sets the mood. It sets the scene. You can make something feel a little more tense or a little more laid back just by what music you choose. It also plays into how you edit, because a lot of times you're cutting in sync with the music. So, just to kind of show you what I'm talking about, I prepared a demo here. It's about two and a half minutes long, and I've got several scenes uh, using the same... It's the same two files, so it's about two minutes of video, and I'm using several different um, musical choices, and you'll see how it affected the editing. Now, I'm using footage from FPS2, which I filmed damn near 10 years ago at this point. And um, the idea here is I just want to show you that in 15 or 20 seconds, you can tell a story, and the music is going to dictate how the story goes. It might not be the whole story, but it's a story. So sit back and enjoy, guys. Somebody take paint. I got it. I'm just a paint boy. All right. This looks awful familiar. It's not on film. Oh, sorry. Damn you. I got it, I got it. It's not on film. Whoa! Hey, check. Up there. You're good. Awesome. Awesome. Where'd that come from? This looks awful familiar. Let me tell you, that is not easy to do, but I think I made the point. Music can help dictate the pace of your video, it sets the tone, it'll determine what you show, how you show it, and how it's taken. I also specifically chose FPS2 because it's old footage, it's like 10 year old footage. But I wanted to prove you don't need the latest in camera gear to make it at least somewhat decent. 
In post-production, you can do a lot of really cool things. Now, let's talk about choosing music. It's a personal choice, and it's really dependent on your style more than anything else, and this is where your style is really going to come through. I like to have a lot of choice so that I can be really flexible with what I want to do. So let's say I'm showing uh, myself stalking through the woods. On what clock? Uh, right, it would be like 2 o'clock. Which is going to be different than a heavy shooting action sequence. <laughs> but there's no golden formula for internet videos. Occasionally you can go against the grain. You can have really laid back music to a really tense scene, or really tense music to a laid back scene. If it works, cool. If not, well, remix and try it again. I mean, you're only out a little bit of time. Big deal. All right, so let's talk about getting music. Uh, because, again, we're talking about the legal stuff here. Now, if you're just doing this for your own YouTube channel, you can probably do whatever you want. I can't stop you. But if you're monetizing or you're thinking about monetizing your video anytime in the future, don't use copywritten music without permission. And that usually involves some sort of payment. And from my experience, that involves five digits of money payment. I know. I asked. And I only heard back from one house. One place. They don't like dealing with amateurs. That's the biggest thing. So, yeah, they said, oh, yeah, it's going to cost this much. And I said, ooh, that's more than I make, like, ever. So we're doing this on the cheap. So what are you looking for? You're looking for royalty-free music. This is your best solution but you almost always have to buy the music in order to use it, but I'm going to get to that in just a moment. The better solution is Creative Commons. It's actually the second best solution, uh, but you need to be careful what kind of license it is with that. Uh, you're looking for Creative Commons by attribution. That means you can give credit to the music creator and you're cool, but not all of them do that. There's some that do attribution by share alike, which means you can use it and remix it in your video, but then your work must also be Creative Commons so other people can remix your work. Most people do Creative Commons no, der no derives, uh, no derivations, I believe it stands for. Damn it, I'm looking this up. Uh, yeah, you can redistribute it uh, for commercial, non commercial, as long as it's passed along unchanged. So that's not really going to be good for you. You also have the non-commercial licenses, and that means that you can't use it if you're making money. This involves like anything that's being uh, commercialized, if you're monetizing videos, whatever, then you can't use it. So be on the lookout for that. You can also, maybe, if you keep your fingers crossed, you can find public domain music too. Occasionally. But I wouldn't count on it. But you, it's out there. It's definitely out there. So, where do you go? Now, if you're on a budget, this is my main go-to source. It's called Incomptech. Here's a link to it, and here's some of the stuff on the page. Now, Kevin McLeod's music is all Creative Commons by attribution. He asks for a donation, and if you can do it, I really recommend you do it. You can also license music for $30 per piece with no attribution needed. And he's got a huge, huge library covering everything from the old-timey music you're listening to right now to this heavy, grungy metal that I'm going to be playing for a little bit here. Definitely go through his site. It's worth your time if you do any kind of videos. Just make sure you give him credit in your credits and you're fine. There's a link below this video to uh, help you out with that. Also, there's a bunch of other sites, too, that you can find. There's, um, I've used uh, Dance Industries and Gemendo, but read the licenses before you download. Uh, a lot of it is Creative Commons, but you can't do anything to the music. So it's free to download, but you can't put it in your video. Pay attention. That's the best thing you can do. There's also another problem with these sites. It's a signal-to-noise ratio. you got to wade through a whole lot of garbage to find the gems. Now, royalty-free is really the way to go if you're serious about this. Um, matter of fact, all the music in that montage earlier was all royalty-free music, but it's not cheap. This has problems for the amateur as well, because a lot of the big houses do not want to deal with amateurs. In le unless you're part of a big studio, they just kind of look at you and scoff. And some of these people want to just license you music for, oh, X amount of time. So you've got to be wary of that. Uh, the best place I found for amateurs was actually where I went through my music. It's a place called Digital Juice. And they've got a lot of good collections there. Definitely check them out if you're serious about this. 
There's also a lot of royalty-free free places on uh, Amazon and other places, but again, signal to noise ratio. You're going to wade through a lot of audio to find one good thing. Okay, I hope this helped. Uh, if you guys want to see more in the series, comment down below and I shall do it for you. Thank you guys very much and I'll talk to you guys later. Good luck filming, guys.